about six o'clock this morning, Grayson had called me and shared with me about Jackie passing away, and and as I was thinking about it, is uh, that the the emotions that roll into your life and the things that happens there, and then I got to thinking about it a little bit more, and I I was thinking about his faithfulness, and until he had the stroke, that he was here every time the door was open. And, and I just appreciate that faithfulness. I, I appreciate that. But then I looked around this morning in 9 o'clock service in our children's ministry and nursery, and everywhere I went, there was somebody that, that was there that was related to him. How many of you know your legacy matters? And, and from this stage to the media center to all through this congregation of just saying these words, how many of you know it, it is important to be faithful? And as I thought about that is, I was just flooded with emotions and things that happens there. And this, this Sunday that we are calling Giving Hope, it is what I realized today. When he took that last breath upon earth, he realized his hope. Because the scripture says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we're just so glad and believing that God's going to do so many miraculous things today. If you're a guest today, we are so glad that you're here with us. Don't don't make yourself, you know, this is not somebody else's house. We want you to feel at home here in the presence of God. How many of you felt the presence of God already today? <laughs> that God's speaking to us right now. I was sharing with the team. I said it's like God just wrapped us up today. <laughs> And wrapped us in his arm today. So we're so happy about that. So we're glad that you're here. If you're a guest, we hope you got a connect card. If you're online with us right now, we're glad that you're online with us right now. Call quit. Our Hispanic service is going on and call quit right now. God has blessed us in so many ways. How many of you know God has blessed us in so many ways? And so we're happy about that. Go with me to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. The title of my message this morning is Looking Back to Go Forward. There is a moment of your life that you do need to look back. You need to remember. Ten years ago, we came uh, here uh, to Union Grove, and we were here. And God just blessed and, and touched. And over these past ten years, we've grown We've seen God do works. We've seen God give us miracles. We've seen God give us land. We've seen God just prosper us in so many ways. A lot of you weren't here 10 years ago. And because people made sacrifices 10 years ago, you're here now and you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I think this is a good time for us to give God praise one more time. Your pastor has a fault. I'm not a good celebrator. I'm not a good partier. I'm not, I'm not really good at that. I'm uncomfortable. And so I like to get something done. So just like last night, we had a great party last night, and I was like, hey, but we need to get something done before we leave here. So as Ken knows, I got some business done at the end of it. And, and, I, and I was thinking to myself, I want to get stuff done, but There is a time to stop and to celebrate. There is a time that you look back and say, hey, this was a good moment in my life. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. It says, now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he was considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Now, I thought about this this week. Wouldn't it be good if we thought about something and God spoke to us while we're thinking about something? I'm going to go ahead and say this for somebody. It would be a good idea for you to think about it before you acted on it. He was thinking about what needed to happen, and he wanted to do the right thing. And notice this, when he thought about it, God spoke to him. He said, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. 
For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took his wife. Now, to look back, to go forward. Now, how many of you remember these words from your spouse? And, and, and it usually always starts like this. I think I'm pregnant. I, I, I think, you know, I've taken the test. We haven't even went to the doctor yet. But I think something is going on. I, I think this moment. Joseph had a moment that he knew what was going on. He understood what was happening. And I can just imagine, and my dad gave me the advice, and he just said these words to me after we told him that Shanna was pregnant. Hey, because I, I must have had that petrified look on my face. Did anybody know what I'm talking about? He goes, you know, son, other people have had babies too. And only the way that my dad can say it was, he wasn't trying to d d dismiss of having another grandchild. But what he wanted me to know is, if they made it, you can too. If this process is it, and if you know our, our first pregnancy, Grayson came at 26 weeks. We spent 13 weeks in the hospital. So we had a little excitement with the first one. Now, thank God for Davis. He was 40 weeks and boring. He hadn't been boring since. But thank God for a second pregnancy that was uneventful. But I, I thought about that so many times is, if you do not understand where you've come from, how can you move forward? If you don't understand that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, there's going to be a day that you have a bad day. You can be saved, set apart, filled with the Holy Spirit, and a member of Union Church, and still have a bad day. You can pray for an hour. You can worship for an hour. You can listen to the podcast on the way to, to work and all, at lunchtime and still somebody at work look at you and go, I don't like you. And like, hey, we're related. you got to like me, okay? But you can have bad days some days. And it gets you to the place that you've got to say these words. I've got to be able to have something to stand upon. I've got to have this moment of my life that means something to me, and I know who I am in Jesus Christ. So as Joseph was thinking there that night, he started thinking back to the 40 generations that came before him. And he said, okay, I understand that people have come before me. I understand that people have had sons and daughters before me. But what does that have to do with me? It has everything to do that if God will be with Joseph, he will also be with you. If God was with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he will also be with you. Let me show you this. We see the faith of Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. The words say in verse 6, it says, And he believed the Lord, and it was counted to him as righteousness. He believed God. Now let's go ahead and say this. Abraham was not a perfect man. Abraham was not a perfect man. They couldn't have children in the way, you know, for, for a long time. They had to wait. They had to wait. They had ideas that were not. How many of you know always a good idea is not a God idea? And so he had all these ideas that were there. He had all these things in his life that he could have looked at and said, this is a good idea, but it wasn't a God idea. 
but he still had the faith in Jesus Christ and what God could do. And it said it was counted to him as righteousness. What does righteousness mean for you and I? That we stand right with God. You ever ask anybody this, this question? Me and you okay? Is everything all right? You're not buying me coffee anymore. I need to know. Is everything right between me and you? I just need to know. So it says that Abraham knew because of his faith in Jesus Christ. It was not a perfect faith, but it was a faith that would not give up. I'm going to have doubts in my life. I'm going to have moments in my life. Anybody had a detour in the past two years? Anybody had a roadblock in the past two years? Anybody had a roadblock this week? And you're saying, God, you said your promises were yes and amen in my life. But God, I don't understand why I'm going through what I'm going right now. Now, his faith was in Jehovah God, that God can make a way where there was no way. He even said, God, how many of you know sometimes we try to help God out? Now, you know, and he wasn't a smart man all the time. He would say words like this, you know me and my wife are old. Let me tell every man in this place, don't ever let that come out of your mouth. She's still young, whether you're old or not. But there was something there that he said, okay, this is a promise of God, and I'm going to have faith in what Jesus Christ is doing. Notice this. In Luke chapter 17, verse 6, it said, And the Lord said, If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could save the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would, be, it would obey you. If I have faith to believe God. Now, my faith doesn't rest in who I am but it does rest in who he is. That if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, that's where my faith lies in. My faith lies in that promise of who God is. Let me tell somebody this today. Our, our moments are going to happen. Anybody have an emotion, if you would have acted on it, we would have opened up a prison ministry today? But you didn't act on it. Somebody needs to say, praise the Lord. <laughs> if I would have acted on my emotions, but my faith is not in my emotions. I'm emotional. I, I love to clap. I love to sing. I love to dance. I, I, love, I love when something good happens for my children, that we celebrate that. But that's not where my faith is. My faith rests in the Word of God that if God says it, it is yes and amen. And I can believe in the promises of God because God is true. Let every man be a liar because God's Word is true. That's where my faith lies. So if my faith is there, God is with me. I don't have to run somewhere else for my faith to be there. My faith is in Jesus Christ. The second thing I want to show you is when Joseph was thinking, he said, well, Abraham was the father of the faithful. But what about somebody else? You ever thought somebody else had it better than you? How many trust fund babies do I have here this morning? We all think that you have it better than we do. But the reality, even, even trust fund babies have bad days. You can be raised in church every day of your life, and you can have some bad days. So he thought, well, what about Abraham? But let me think about Isaac a little bit, too. Isaac was one of those people, and I want you, I want you to see this. Genesis chapter 26, verse 22. It says he moved from there and dug another well. Now, when we start to understand what's happening right here is there was a famine in the land. There was a famine. Now, what his father did was something, but there was another famine in the land, and he said, God, what do you want me to do? Our hope is not some generation past hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ that if God has brought us to it, he can also bring us through it. 
that His power has not diminished, that His Word is still true. No matter what happens in America, God's Word is still true. No matter what happens in your business, God's Word is true. It is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God's Word is true. And he said, and he moved from there and dug another well. And they did not quarrel over it. Now let me, let me just explain this hope that Isaac had. See, he dug one well during a famine. And they came in. They were mad at him because God prospered him. If God blesses you, somebody's going to be mad at you. I don't want to hurt your feelings. But it's the truth. If God blesses you, somebody's going to be mad at you. And the blessings of God does not keep you from trouble sometimes. The favor of God. You can have the favor of God on your life and some people are not going to like you. You can be, I mean, just blessed and favored and prosperity all around you, and somebody's not going to like you. So Isaac dug one well, and they came in and put dirt and debris in that well. Then, it's a good thing, okay? It's a good thing he went and dug another well. Because, let me tell you, no matter what kind of dream you have, you need water. Let me tell somebody this today. No matter what purpose you have, you need the living water. And if you drink of this water, you'll never thirst again. You may feel self-sufficient and you don't need all this church stuff and you don't need all this. But let me tell you, there's going to be a day that you're going to be at the end of yourself, but you can be at the beginning of what Christ has for your life. When you understand that is, that hope that's there. So he dug the second well. And then they got mad at him again. Anybody think you, you're on, you know, like your life is Groundhog Day? Like, I'm here again. I'm here again. This happened again. Oh, this happened again. Oh, this happened again. You know, in your marriage, with your children, with your finances, and you're like, can I really have hope? I'm going to tell you this. Your hope does not rely in the well of man, but your hope relies in the promises of God. So man says, that's the well. And there's dirt and debris in that. Man says, that's the well, and there's dirt and debris in that. But you know what God says? Let man close the door over here. Let, God, let man close the door over here, because I'll make a way where there is no way. The promises of God are yes and amen. And every, see, when man shuts a door and man shuts another door, God's about to put you into an open space that a door is going to be there that no man can shut. God's going to give you the desires of your heart. That's where my hope lies at. My hope does not lie in the paper of America. My hope does not lie in a political solution. My hope does not de- rely upon social media. No, my hope relies on the promises of God. No matter what the whales are doing right now, I know the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So when you realize that, you can have the faith of Abraham. You can have the hope of Isaac. But you need to have the love of Jacob. Let's talk about love. Let's talk about love. We kind of use the word kind of funny, don't we? How many of you love ice cream? Say amen. Now, we'll use that word, and I've used it. We love ice cream. Chocolate. Dutch. Bluebell. Dairy Queen dip cone. Can I get an Amen. I mean, you know, it's good. I don't love ice cream. I'm not willing to give my life for ice cream. I'll have a milkshake instead. (laughs) But I'm talking about real love. Jacob's going back. God God sends sends him back after 14 years. And he starts going back home. 
Well, anybody had to go back somewhere where you messed up? Can I get an amen for some people that went to a high school reunion? You start calling your friends if you still have any from high school. Are you going to be there? If you're not going to be there, I'm not going to be there either. I'm going to need somebody to talk to. Nobody talked to me in high school. Or everybody talked to me and I was mean to them afterwards. So you're about walking into this place. Jacob was about to walk into a place where he had been so crafty, so cunning within himself that he had mistreated a brother. Merry Christmas. He walks in. Before he gets there, God had just done a work in his life and his family had grown. He had prospered. But he knew he was walking back into a difficult situation. And he walks. And he walks. How many of you have ever been into a situation and right before you walked in the door and said, Jesus, take the wheel. I cannot do this within myself. God, I need you to do a work in my life. And he walks in. And before he gets there, he has an encounter with God. This encounter with God that he has changes his life forever. Because he needed to run, but God had to give him a limp so he could run. Because he had spent most of his life running from this place to this place. He was a mama's boy. Whatever mama told him to do, that's what he did. He went through a lot of things in his life. But now he was confronted with the plan of God for his life. The destiny that God had for him. And he said, before I go meet my brother, because they had already told him, my brother is coming out with 400 warriors to meet me. Now, I don't know about you, but when they say, I'm bringing me and my army with me, there's going to be a little reservations that's there. So he had an encounter with God that night. He put them in two separate camps and got by himself and said, okay, God. I'll wrestle with whatever I need to wrestle with so I can love like you've called me to love. I'll do whatever it takes to wrestle with those things. See, I see some of you today in this service, the Holy Spirit has confronted you about some things in your life. and You're wrestling with it right now. You're saying, really, God? Can I, God? Can I give it all to you? And God's saying, yes. Because I love you like nobody has ever loved you. Genesis chapter 15. Abraham. was in a valley of decision for himself. God spoke to him and said, I am your shield and I am your exceeding great reward. But see, we can have faith, we can have hope, and we can have love, but sometimes we're not going to understand And he said these words, very simple. How can I believe? Because you said I was going to have a legacy. You said I was going to have a family. You said if I put my faith in you, my hope in you, my love in you, all these things would come to pass. And he got to that place and he said, one of my servants is going to inherit everything that I have. And he goes, no. You're going to have a son. You're going to have a legacy. You're going to have inheritance that will come because I am your shield and I am your exceeding great reward. 
Abraham takes out the only thing he knows to do is he says okay God this is the altar that I'm going to make and he took the animals and laid them out livestock birds and he did everything that he knew to do and God waited a few moments how do I know that God waited a few moments because it said he had to run away the birds that were coming to try to eat the carcass that was there we would say buzzards we would say vultures there's some of you that need to run away some things in your life that's trying to steal what God has blessed you with so he runs away the vultures but God come down started walking through the mist of the sacrifice he walked around and he walked around and if you know anything about the sacrifice there was blood laying on the ground from the sacrifice see God did it in a blood covenant because he says this is not up to you this is my covenant to you <laughs> and see when I put my faith and my hope and my love in Jesus Christ he said it's up to me and it's up to my word no devil in hell no circumstance that you'll ever go through will keep you from the love that is in Jesus Christ I want you to bow your head and close your eyes right there where you are there's some of you that are carrying heavy burdens today family burdens Burdens of sickness, burdens of depression, anxiety, burdens that I can't even imagine. You were abused, you were neglected, but this morning you need to say, God, I give everything to you, and my faith, and my hope, and my love is based upon you. Right there where you are, you say, Pastor, I don't want to leave with the burden I'm carrying right now. If it's you, then just lift up your hand right there where you are. Just as a sign that says, I'm not leaving with this burden any longer. I'm not leaving with this burden any longer. I give it to Jesus Christ. I give it all to you. Now I want us to pray together. Heavenly Father, you see the hands that are lifted all over this sanctuary. Of people saying, I'm carrying a heavy burden. I don't know what to do and I don't know what to say. But God, this morning I'm going to put my faith and my hope and my love in you. Because I know you first loved me. And Father, I pray that right now, whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual, no matter what it is, God, that we cast all of our cares upon you. Because you care for us. And God, we believe that you're going to do that work of grace. Still with your head bowed and your eyes closed. And if you can put down your hands right now. Thank you for doing that. If you'll just put down your hands. I want to ask one more question. I want you to pray a prayer with me. You say, Pastor, I would love to have that faith and that hope and that love in my life. I need to know him as my Savior. Maybe somebody here, and you know this, you've walked away. You're backslidden. You know that. But you don't want to leave here like you came. So I'm going to pray for you right now, and I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me right now. Just repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Let your blood wash away my sins. I will serve you as my Savior and my Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If that was you this morning right there where you are just lift your hand and say I've given my heart to Jesus Christ I've given everything to him right now I've given my life to him right now God now all over this sanctuary let's just give the Lord an ovation of praise and worship I want to end this message and they're about to sing this together and I want us to sing it with all of our hearts I want you to remember the dream, but I want you to live in the promise. See, I can't live in the dream, but I
but I can remember the promises of God. And every promise of God is yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So I'm not walking in a dreamland. I'm walking in the promises of God. That's for each and every one of you here. I remember the dream, but I'm living in the promises of God. Let's stand and worship together. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Pastor Todd's message was so encouraging, and we're so glad you were here for it. Don't forget, we have small group signups going on right now. The link will be listed down below. Remember, we were never meant to do live by ourselves, so make sure you get plugged into a small group. Also, if you want to rewatch this message, you can subscribe to our YouTube or follow us on Facebook. We hope you have a great week. God bless you, and we love you.